Perfect. Sorry. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for today's call with LNI Secretary Jerry Oleksiak and UC Benefits Policy Director Susan Dickinson. I'm Teresa Elliott, Deputy Communications Director for LNI. Please submit your questions by clicking the chat icon, the blue thought bubble at the bottom of your screen. Please include your name and media outlet, followed by your question. In the interest of time, you'll be limited to one question, but time permitting, we'll open up the call for a second round. You may submit any follow-up questions to us at dlipress at pa.gov, and we'll address them after the call. For your awareness, this call is being recorded. If you do not consent to being recorded, please hang up now. Following the call, a link to the recording will be provided to the media outlets that participated today. We'll get started with comments from Secretary Jerry Oleksiak. Secretary? Thank you, Teresa, and uh, thank you, uh, members of the media. We appreciate your patience in both the uh, rescheduling from yesterday and uh, changing the time today. So I appreciate your uh, patience and forbearance. Um, I'm gonna start with the um, latest uh, statistics we have since March 15th. We've paid more than $24.7 billion in uh, total benefits, 4.6 billion from our regular unemployment compensation program. 15.5 billion from the federal pandemic unemployment compensation program. And you know, that's the extra $600 that ended on the week of July 25th. 4.4 billion from the pandemic unemployment assistance program for those traditionally not eligible for unemployment. 223 million with an M from the pandemic emergency unemployment compensation program, which are the federal extended benefits and 27.1 million from the Pennsylvania Extended Benefit Program. Uh, as of today, 97% of eligible claimants who filed for regular unemployment compensation between March 15th and July 11th were either paid or deemed not eligible for benefits. Again, that's 97% in that window between March 15th and July 11th who were either paid or are not eligible for benefits. The remaining 3% represent 48,916 cases that are pending resolution. The automated system couldn't approve those claims for various reasons, and they are under individual review by staff. As I'm sure you noticed, this number fluctuates a little from week to week, and that is to be expected as we expand the date parameters. Uh, UC employees have worked more than 254,930 total overtime hours since March 15th, which includes the service centers and all other areas of UC. And we have increased staffing levels. Uh, we've more than doubled them, over 110% since March 15th, with the hiring of new employees and reassigning of staff from other agencies. On March 15th, we had 775 employees, and we now have a current total of 1,628. For the month of July, 452 support staff and new employees joined UC and we will be bringing 100 new staff on board and expect them to start within the next few weeks. Uh, since March 15th, we've helped uh, 803,000, 95,000 citizens through email, 367,436 by phone, 130,165 by live chat, <clears throat> excuse me, and 294,963 with our virtual assistance. Uh, since I joined Alan I as secretary nearly three years ago, I've repeatedly reminded our staff that uh, it, it's important that we follow the rules and regs and all the procedures, but we must never lose sight of the fact that there are real people on the other end of everything that we do. And this is especially true now during this public health and economic crisis due to the COVID-19 global pandemic. As I say every week on these media calls, I'm very proud of the work our agency has done, but we are far from satisfied and we won't be satisfied until every Pennsylvanian who is eligible for benefits has been made whole. <clears throat> Recently, LNI has been accused of being tone deaf to the plight of our fellow citizens. And we have heard that, quote, nothing has been accomplished since the beginning of this global pandemic. Nothing could be further from the truth. Any suggestions that the admitted shortcomings of Pennsylvania's UC system are the result of inaction 
apathy or idleness on the part of the public servants who have kept the system running, kept the benefits flowing, and gotten the new and expanded programs up and running in record time in the middle of a global pandemic is misguided and misinformed. We are working every day to make sure that every Pennsylvanian who is eligible and owed unemployment benefits will get the money they worked hard for and the benefits they deserve. I want to talk a little bit about uh, President Trump's lost wages uh, memorandum uh, related to the uh, FPUC and the six, extra $600. As I'm sure you are all aware, President Trump recently signed an executive order that included a presidential memorandum for his Lost Wages Act. We are reviewing the guidance and information for this program, which continues to be updated by the federal government. And although Governor Wolf and I strongly feel an extension by Congress of the $600 weekly pandemic unemployment compensation program that ended in July is the easiest solution, Al and I plans on applying to the Federal Emergency Management Agency to hopefully receive a portion of the $44 billion program. We are awaiting further guidance from FEMA before we can submit our application. The President's program is for a very limited time and funding might only be for five weeks or less. The benefit will likely be $300 for Pennsylvanians. We have been hearing from claimants asking when they will be receiving their money. The answer is not as easy as it would be if Congress simply extended the FPUC benefit, which would enable us to get payments out the door to eligible recipients very quickly. But because the president's temporary program is funded by FEMA and is not a true unemployment insurance program, Pennsylvania will most likely have to build a new processing system for the claims. Also, per the eligibility requirements laid out in the president's memorandum, 30,000 Pennsylvanians who receive less than $100 per week in unemployment benefits will not be eligible for this program. This convoluted program, which is a Band-Aid rather than an actual solution, is responsible, responsible for delaying getting this supplemental funding to the people who need it now to pay bills and feed their families. Like many other states, Pennsylvania believes the new program cannot be quickly implemented. We are still evaluating exactly what will be needed and how long it will take us to have this new program in place. Hardworking Pennsylvanians need more than a temporary program that is forcing us to recreate the wheel. They need Congress to do the right thing and move quickly to extend the FPUC weekly benefit. Talk a little bit about the fraud update. As I do on each of these calls, I am continuing to urge Pennsylvanians to report all instances of unemployment benefits fraud. We continue to partner with the U.S. Attorney's Office in Philadelphia, the Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office, the Pennsylvania Treasury, U.S. Bank, and more on this ongoing criminal investigation. The widespread identity theft fraud ring is targeting COVID-19 unemployment compensation benefit programs across the nation, including Pennsylvania. Many Pennsylvanians are not even aware their identities were stolen in the past until they receive correspondence from our office or a debit card from UC Bank, U.S. Bank, excuse me, U.S. Bank. I urge everyone to remain vigilant, recognize the scam warning signs, and know what to do if you become a victim. The press release we issued on July 31st is available on www.dli.pa.gov. That press release includes a list of uh, scam warning signs, details on how to report fraud, and instructions for individuals to return any fraudulent benefits they receive. Um, finally, we are continuing to hold our virtual town halls for the public. We do that every Thursday and allow them to ask questions directly uh, of our UC expert, uh, Susan Dickinson, who is joining me today, as always. We've held 12 town halls so far with the 13th scheduled for this Thursday, August 20th. People can participate in the town hall by live streaming at access.live slash PA labor or calling 833-380-0719. Members of the public can ask general questions about Pennsylvania's unemployment compensation during the town hall. A moderator will provide instructions for participants on how to submit 
their questions. I don't believe Susan has any updates for us today, so we will um, be happy to take your uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for the update, Secretary Oleksiak. And we're gonna pause for a moment and wait for some questions from our reporters. Mm -hmm. Again, if you have questions regarding the information you just heard or additional questions for Susan or Secretary Oleksiak, please submit them via the blue chat button at the bottom of your screen. Laura Benshaw from WHYY asks, can you put any time frame on how long it could take the additional $300 to be disbursed to UC recipients? It's uh, uh, very difficult to do that uh, right now. We don't have all the uh, guidance we need from either FEMA, uh, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or the US Department of Labor. We don't know um, what exactly will be required of the system that we will need to create to uh, provide this um, benefit. Uh, we are uh, anxiously awaiting. We are already preparing our application. Uh, it could take as long as a, a month or more uh, to get that system uh, ready. I don't know, Susan, if... Uh, you're oh, correct sorry. that... Susan. That's okay. <laughs> I was going to say, you're correct that um, we don't have full information yet, although we do receive more information every day. Sometimes it's in the form of uh, official uh, UI program letters, which they, the U.S. Department of Labor publishes on their website. Other times it's through informal emails, uh, so it's not a real coordinated effort, it seems, but uh, they are trying to get information to the states as quickly as possible uh, so that we can start acting on, on trying to create what we need to create to get the benefits out. Next, WTAE's Paul Van Alstel asks, can you provide an update on the status of the UC Trust Fund? Okay, I'm gonna ask again, maybe you guys did not hear me. <laughs> um, WTAE's Paul Van Alstel asks, can you provide an update on the status of the UC Trust Fund? That was my fault, Teresa. I was answering and I was on mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, we did get uh, updated numbers uh, yesterday. I don't have those numbers uh, right now. We can get them for you and have them available at the end of the call. Uh, we are uh, in the process of uh, uh, applying for the uh, a loan from uh, the Department of Labor, and uh, we can get that exact number for you when, when the call is done. All right. Next, we have... Mark Scoferro from AP. Who made the decision about applying to FEMA and when was that made? Uh, that's a decision made by the administration uh, that we support and uh, we are, uh, are, are doing what we can to uh, um, get that application going as we continue to wait for uh, further guidance. We have been talking with our own uh, Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency as well as the uh, um, governor's office to make sure that we are are doing everything we need to do to apply for that um, those dollars. Next, we have Michael Gorsinger online. For the purposes of television, can Susan talk about the frustrations of having to set up an entire new system and what this means for the people waiting for benefits? Sure, I can provide a few uh, pieces of information about what it will be like to set up a new system to pay this benefit from the executive order. Um, the uh, Right now in Pennsylvania, as many of you know, we have our old legacy system, uh, which is what's paying our regular UC benefits, our uh, multiple CARES Act programs, uh, but then we also have a separate system to pay the PUA program from the CARES Act. Um, we're also modernizing our legacy system and still anticipate going to our new system for regular UC claims in about two months or so, or three months uh, sometime this fall. So uh, it is kind of a, a strange time for us to be implementing a whole new system because we are you know, moving forward on, on our existing systems. Um, one of the, the challenges with this uh, new benefit that we would have to pay is that it is not an unemployment source uh, that funds it. 
it is emergency funds, so it cannot intermingle with our regular UC trust fund, which means our system can't pay it. Uh, we did, all the states did ask US Department of Labor if it was possible to just move the money over to the trust fund, but it is um, against the law, so we cannot do that. We have to set up some different way to pay this money out of a completely separate fund that isn't related to unemployment compensation. So uh, this program then also has to look to be able to see who gets paid for which weeks on our multiple different systems, and then be able to decide uh, if that person is due one of these benefits for that week. Um, one of the things that the uh, that are required of us for this system is to ask individuals when they file their claims if they are unemployed due to COVID-19. Um, for our PUA program, that's not a problem because that was already part of the program and we do already ask that question. But for the rest of our programs, that is not a question that has been asked. So in order to pay benefits to individuals who are on our other programs, we have to now go back and ask them that question specifically uh, in order to pay them benefits. Um, also, the system has to look to see if someone has a weekly benefit rate of less than $100 because the executive order excludes those individuals uh, who do not have a higher weekly benefit amount to, from receiving benefits. You have to have a weekly benefit rate of $100 or more. Uh, in Pennsylvania, the minimum weekly benefit rate is $68 a week. So anyone who falls from $68 to $99 will be excluded from receiving this benefit per the executive order. Uh, so, I, you know, as you can imagine, there are a lot of these different factors and other things that we have to consider. Um, so it will be a bit time consuming and, and making sure that all the business rules work so that we're paying benefits only to those who uh, qualify for benefits and that, uh, we, you know, we're getting the right people in the pool and uh, also making the benefits retroactive uh, to August 1st. Um, that's also going to be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, Next, Teresa, yeah. Teresa, excuse me if I could. Teresa, sure. yeah, I, I did get uh, the uh, dollar figure on the uh, balance in the trust fund as of uh, this is as of August 14th, 555 million, 563,871. Again, that's 555 million, 563,871 dollars. And that um, figure is published on a, a a U.S. Treasury Department uh, website. That's a nice long uh, uh, address, so we can uh, provide that, uh, Teresa, when we're uh, at the end of the, uh, and when you uh, reach out to the uh, media. Okay, next we have Altoona Mayor's Bill Kibler. Has Pennsylvania decided not to provide the additional $100 to supplement the $300 from FEMA? Uh, no decision has been made about that as of now. We are looking at uh, what options we have uh, to uh, provide those dollars. Uh, and when we have a decision made, uh, you will hear. Christian Hetrick from the Philadelphia Inquirer asked about how many people who file claims for unemployment since March 15th are waiting for their claims to either be accepted or rejected. Uh, the number I read earlier, and Susan, you can uh, jump in as well. Uh, let me find it here. It was uh, in in that window, March 15th through um, July 11th. Uh, it's 97% are eligible. That's 48 uh, were, are resolved, deemed uh, eligible for payment or in, have been paid or are ineligible. Uh, the remaining 3%, that's 48,916 cases. Uh, for the cases between July 11th and today, that number uh, uh, is constantly fluctuating, um, and uh, I don't have an exact percentage that I can give you. I don't know, if Susan, if you can, or exact number. I don't know, Susan, if you can provide any further uh, information. Yeah, I, I don't have this week's number. I had the the percentage, um, and I'll just just uh, reinforce what you were saying. So every week when we give that percentage, what we've decided to do is add another week to it, the most recent week. Uh, if you notice, like right now, the stats go through July 11th from the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, you know, so next week when we report it, it'll be through July 18th and then again through, you know, July 25th. So we we're always adding a week, which means there's always going to be more unprocessed claims because the, the 
sooner, or no, it's not the right word. The more recent the week, um, the less processed claims there are going to be because the claims are newer and we still have to, you know, reach out to the different parties to make decisions. We still have to reach out to the claimants to ask for questions. Uh, so we're, um, you know, expanding our uh, parameters every week as we go, if that makes sense, uh, just to keep it about a month back um, and and always have that in perspective when we're looking from the beginning of the pandemic, we're always going to be looking at what have we processed all the way up through a month ago. Um, so that's why that percentage may fluctuate 98, 97, uh, you know, somewhere around there is just because we're adding more claims every week. Um, so it's something that's more recent and, uh, you know, that's always going to take, um, you know, make it change a little bit just because we're still doing work on more recent claims that other claims, uh, most of older claims have already been handled. And let me repeat those numbers uh, if I could. It was, it's 97% of eligible claimants who filed for regular unemployment compensation between March 15th and July 11th were either paid or determined to uh, be ineligible for benefits. Uh, the remaining 3% represent 48,916 cases that are pending resolution. And those are uh, cases that our staff has to review individually, manually, to uh, determine what the issue is with those particular claims. All right, next we have, before I read the next question, just want to remind everyone, it looks like we're leading into our second round of questions. So if you have any additional questions for Secretary Oleksiak or Susan at this time, please submit them now. Next, we have Mark Skolforo from AP asking again about the timing of the FEMA application decision. When was it made? This weekend? Today? I'm sorry, the timing of the decision? Yes, he wants to know when that decision was made. Uh, from the day the, the president's memorandum uh, came out, we were in constant conversation uh, uh, with uh, the governor's office, with uh, within our own office, with uh, FEMA. I couldn't tell you an exact date or time that the decision was made, but the decision was made to uh, um, apply for the benefit. Next, Zachary Hopes from Carlisle Sentinel asks, follow up, following up to Bill's question, would the additional $100 need to be appropriated by the state legislature or could Governor Wolf do that unilaterally? unilaterally? I don't know if the governor could do it unilaterally or, or what uh, if the legislature can um, um, uh, allot or uh, appropriate that those dollars. Um, I know we can count some of money, uh, the UC funds that we are paying out of our trust fund towards that. I don't know, Susan, if you have any more information related to that. No, that's correct. Uh, they were We were advised that in order to at least pay the 300, um, the 100 can be considered from what we're already paying from from state resources for unemployment in the aggregate, not not on the individual le level, but it will be across across the program. Um, so in order to pay an additional 100 to uh, claimants, that would have to you know come from some other sort of special fund, uh, you know, either appropriation. I'm, I'm not sure if the governor can do that or not, but um, the, there would have to be some other source for that. And, and let me uh, again remind uh, uh, folks on the call that uh, this is uh, definitely a work in progress. We are still getting guidance that the guidance uh, based on things that have happened uh, before with uh, the federal programs under the CARES Act. <clears throat> we get the guidance, the guidance changes, we uh, set things up, things change. So we are uh, <clears throat> watching this very closely. We've, we've had calls with uh, uh, Pima, uh, we've had calls with the US Department of Labor and uh, we will continue to uh, monitor this uh, program and uh, put it into effect as quickly and as effectively as we can. And that appears to be all the questions we have today. If any of our participants for today's call have any additional questions, please submit them to the press office at dlipress.pa.gov and we will forward a response to you as soon as possible. Thank you, Susan and Secretary Alexiak for your time today, and thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.